Hello, it's Kyler with Followhook. Today we're talking about project broadcast campaigns. We've finally arrived. We've talked about a lot of things with project broadcast, and now this is, in my opinion, the real beauty of the tool, right? Automating things. Campaigns let you automate a series of text messages. Example, let's say you're a network marketer, and every time you get a new customer, maybe there's a series of seven text messages you'd like to send them over a period of time that tells them more about the company. You can design all those text messages and even personalize them based on information from that customer, like their name, etc., and then have those automatically send out to them. So then with that campaign set, then all you have to do is add someone to that campaign and then Project Broadcast takes it from there. You don't have to be a mathematics genius to see how that's gonna save you a lot of time. So let's dive in. I've signed into Project Broadcast and I've clicked on the megaphone, which is your campaigns. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover some basic functionality of how to add and delete campaigns and then we'll go into the different types of campaigns. So to add a campaign, just click the blue plus sign. I'm gonna give it a name, leave it at drip, click save. So that's how you add a campaign, very straightforward, right? And I'm on the browser interface, so it'll look a little different if you're on a phone or iPad, but pretty much the same. So under name, you'll find the drip messages. We'll go over that in more detail in a second. And then uh, contacts is how you can add people manually to the campaign. And then if you check this right here, if a contact replies to any of your campaign messages, regardless of what the reply is, it will remove them from the campaign. Typically, this isn't something you wanna do, but it's a nice feature for very unique circumstances. And then message boost, we've talked about this already. Project Broadcast can try and send the messages out a little faster because as you know, they do a, a specific pause so that the messages are not marked as spam by any of the carriers. So normally you don't wanna use message boost uh, because you want your messages to be delivered. So very simple, right? If I wanted to delete this campaign, I could click the three blue dots and click delete. I could clone it. So let's say I set up a campaign and I wanted to clone it for a different group of people and just make some small changes. Cloning will completely duplicate your efforts, but it will not move the same subscribers over. So it's just the campaign itself. And then the fast forward feature is very handy. Let's say you get a campaign built and you want to test it, but the campaign is designed to take place over 10 days and you don't want to wait that long. If you choose fast forward and then select the contact you want to send to, which is typically going to be yourself, then you'll get those messages one every minute. So an 11 day campaign is only going to take 11 minutes to send to you. So that's a really nice feature to quickly review how your campaign is going to look on an actual device. And then the other and the most common way to add people to a campaign is via keywords. We've already talked about keywords. You click on the key and you can go to your existing keywords. And I have a test keyword here. If I click on that, under join campaigns, I can click add campaigns to join, choose my customer welcome campaign, and then click add selected. And then anytime someone sends the keyword test to my project broadcast phone number, they will automatically be added to my customer welcome campaign. Another note on keywords, when you're using a keyword to add people to a campaign, you can specify a reply message over here on the right and then a reply delay. So why would you use that? Well, let's say you have a drip campaign and it's set to send people the first text message the next day after they're added to the campaign. Well, just to let them know that they are added and they don't wonder what happened, you could set a reply message that says, hey, thanks for requesting tips on our new product. You'll see the first text tomorrow, something like that. And then you could set the reply delay to be however long you want to wait after they send in that keyword to get that message. Also very nice. And the other cool bit of information is this is where we finally get into integration with Followhook because Followhook integrates with Project Broadcast via campaigns. You can set up a Followhook group to sync with a Project Broadcast campaign. So anyone that's added to your Followhook group, they'll automatically be added to Project Broadcast to that specific campaign. And we have a separate lesson that talks about how to do that, but let me stay on track. Now let's talk about the different types. I'm gonna click the plus sign again to add a new campaign, and you'll see that there's drip, time-lapsed, calendar, repeating birthday, and anniversary. So let's cruise through these so that you know why you would wanna use each one for certain situations. So my customer welcome campaign is already a drip campaign as you can see here. So I'm going to click Manage under Drip Messages and click the plus to add my first message. The name of the message is something just for you. They don't see that. Here's the message itself with all the normal tools that you would have. If you're not familiar with these tools, you need to watch our earlier Project Broadcast lessons. And if I scroll down, here are the unique parts of a Drip Message campaign. You can specify a day delay with an exact time. 
And the day delay is based on the anchor point, which is when someone joins the campaign. So if I do one here, it's gonna be one day after they join. If I do seven, it's seven days. And then the time is the exact time that this particular text message will send out. And you can change this for each text message, which is really nice. If you leave this to zero, Project Broadcast will send it same day. If your time was say 1 p.m. to send the text message out and they joined at 10 p.m., it's gonna send it to them immediately. If they join at 1 p.m. and the message is set to send out at 5 p.m., it'll wait till 5 p.m. to send it to them. So I'm gonna save this message, one message so far, and I'm gonna add another one, put in the name and the message, and then under day delay, I'm gonna set it to two. Now just to be clear, for those of you that use MailChimp or ConvertKit, this is not two days after the last message was sent. This is two days from the anchor point, which is the time that they joined the campaign. So they will get this one day after the first message. So just make sure you're clear on that because uh, MailChimp and ConvertKit let you do it based on when the last message was sent, which is not better or worse, it's just a different way to do it. So make sure you understand that. And then you select the time, etc. And so you can keep on doing this and then you could have as many messages as you want and when someone's added to this campaign, like based on, like by a keyword or a follow hook group, then boom, all your messages go. Nice, right? So what's the difference in a drip and a time lapsed? Well, let's just add one. So time lapsed, when you add a message, you scroll to the bottom, instead of giving a day and a time, it's an hour delay and a minute delay. So I can say, send this zero hours in zero minutes after someone joins the campaign and they'll get it immediately even if they join at 1 a.m. in the morning. And it operates based on the same anchor point idea when someone joins the campaign. So I could say hour delay of zero and maybe minute delay of three minutes. And so three minutes after they send the keyword back, they get a text message from me. And then if I added another text message to this campaign, I could say, hey, delay now 24 hours and then they would get another message at the same exact time of the next day. So as you can see, this can be a little dicey because what if they happen to be up at 2 a.m. the day that they send you that keyword? Well, if you delayed the second text message by 24 hours, then they would get the next one at 2 a.m. Well, that might not be good because they might be asleep. So this time-lapsed campaign is really nice for certain scenarios, but most of the time, you're probably gonna be doing a drip so you can specify the time of day so that you're not waking people up and making them mad. So what else we got? We've got a calendar. So here's how a calendar campaign is different. If I go to manage messages for this calendar campaign, for each message I specify a specific date and time. So with a normal drip campaign, people get every message based on when they join the campaign, right? With a calendar campaign, they only get messages based on where they hit in the calendar. So if you have a calendar campaign that's covering the entire month of November, and they join November 18th, they're only going to get the project broadcast messages that are scheduled to send the 18th and after. They won't get the ones that happened earlier. And this is nice because if it is an event or a sale, the messages are typically time sensitive, day sensitive, and dumping them with a bunch of other information wouldn't make sense. Go here for registration. Well, registration was three days ago, so it's just confusing. So you get it. That's the difference between a calendar campaign. And okay, what else do we have? Repeating, I'm not gonna dive into the settings on these because they're very self-explanatory. A repeating campaign is simply a recurring message that you wanna send out over and over and over again. If there's a message that you want a certain group of contacts to get at a certain time of each month, you create the message, you specify the day and time to send it, and you're done. And that campaign will continue to work for you. Birthday, if you have their birthday information, you can send out a message on their birthday. Project Broadcast will automatically do that for anyone added to that campaign. And the same goes for anniversary. So that's it for the different types of campaigns. And another note I didn't mention, you can't add anyone to a campaign if it doesn't have any messages. For example, no messages on this campaign. If I go to try to add someone, it's gonna give me an error message, right? You have to add messages first. And then a final note about campaigns, if you want to make sure your campaigns are scheduled and actually gonna send, you can always check your calendar in Project Broadcast. And any messages that you have scheduled are gonna show up here in your calendar. So when you set up a campaign and you add people either via follow hook or they send in a keyword or you add, manually add them, you should see them show up here in the schedule. And so that's, that's really it for campaigns. I always say just take a lot of time to craft your words. Don't write anything that you wouldn't wanna read yourself. Um, spend a lot of time really condensing things down, using creative words, be engaging, 
And the more time you spend into that, the more people are going to get out of your campaign, the more you're going to get out of the campaign because people's response will be better. If you have any questions, uh, please post in the support forum. Thank you so much for being a FollowHook customer. And I can't wait to show you how to tie your campaigns in Project Broadcast to FollowHook groups. We'll talk about that next.